Hello everyone. Uh, this topic is around uh, application layer protocols. Uh, we'll be understanding about a file transfer protocol, secure shell, followed by www. So uh, what is an FTP? FTP is a protocol which tries to allow us to send some data from one computer to another computer. In other terms, it allows a data transfer from a client to the server or from the server to your client. So the basic purpose of this FTP is to exchange the data from one system to another system. Now, what we try to do here, exchange of data means you are sitting on one computer and trying to retrieve some data which is present on another computer. In other terms, that is a server. So this client tries to issue commands through this FTP protocol and try to retrieve or send the data to and from this particular server. And the important points uh, with respect to this FTP are basically whenever you use the file transfer protocol uh, is basically an unsecured way of exchanging the data from client to the server. So we issue commands from one end of the computer to the other side of the computer through FTP and whatever the data that is being transmitted or exchanged between these two computers is unsecured. In other terms, uh, anybody can try to see what is the exact data that is being transferred from one side to the other side. So once the third person can see the data, he obviously there is a chance to change the data too. But nevertheless, if you are not very much concerned about the data to be uh, transferred in an unsecured way, you can consider the usage of this FTP protocol. And uh, the other two important things that you need to understand here is on the, this protocol FTP works on the port number 21. And there is no authentication mechanism before the data transfer takes place. It means uh, anonymous user can log in from the client and issue the commands to retrieve or send the data to and from this particular server. In continuation to this FTP, there is a new protocol now which we call it as secured file transfer protocol. So the meaning of secured is there is a, a, a secured layer is been uh, incorporated before the transmission of the data. It means the data that is being exchanged between the client and the server or one device to another device, the data is being encrypted. So the encryption makes uh, the data to be transmitted in a secure manner so that there is no other process which can try to view or try to change the data that is being exchanged between the client and the server. So there's another mechanism here, uh, the user can login before the actual data transmission takes place. So the authentication mechanism is incorporated in this secured file transfer protocol. And one more thing, the difference between FTP and S SFTP is that this SFTP works with a port number 22. So when we say the data is been transmitted across this client and the server, it means the data is being transmitted with the help of the underlying protocol, the TCP, transmission control protocol. It means there is a connection is established and there is a reliable data transfer from one end of the system to the another end of the system. So basically a TCP is a connection oriented protocol. It guarantees the data transfer between the client and the server. So if you look into the the third protocol, which is related to the FTP itself, which call it as trivial file transfer protocol. Trivial file transfer protocol is basically used within the local area network. It means in, inside a small network of your home or inside a small network of your building or an organization. So this TFTP is not used to exchange the data across the internet in the sense that you cannot use this protocol to transfer or to send or retrieve the data uh, across the internet where the systems are connected at distance apart. So 
the purpose of this tftp is to basically exchange some configuration files within your local area networks that is between your routers and your switches and with the electronic devices that are located very near within your own building or within your own home so that the configuration files are getting exchanged so this is basically a connection less uh, type of data transmission where the user datagram protocol is in active instead of tcp the basic commands that you can issue along with the ftp are you can use uh, send the user authentication commands along with the ftp by specifying the user and the corresponding password with respect to the user and uh, the other basic commands such as to know what is the type of the server which you are trying to access using syst command and the current working directory storing and retrieving the commands these are the basic commands which you may issue at the ftp prompt so now let us see how we, this ftp is going to be useful and how this ftp can be you make use of transferring the data from one computer to another computer the well known uh, tools that are available in the market are one is the filezilla and is a software a tool which can be used to transfer the data from one computer to the other computer as well as uh, for the windows systems you can use windows secure copy in short we call it as win scp tool which has, can also be used for transferring the data from one computer to another computer so in order to have some understanding and to have some practice so i can suggest we can use this speedtest.tele2.net uh, to understand how this ftp commands can be useful so i have installed win scp on my computer so let us see how i can issue the commands and transfer the files that is the data from my system to other system or from the server to the current system upload so just have a practice on this one so coming next protocol coming to the next protocol is on the telnet Telnet protocol this is also one of the application layer protocol. Basically, it is a terminal emulation program that is used to access the remote servers. So this protocol, it was used in the olden days. Uh, just to have an idea, I have put it in your presentation now. So let us try to understand what this Telnet is. So Telnet, in short, this is a short form called from the tele type network. This is basically to connect to a remote server yes and you are trying to access the remote servers information by typing some commands on it, your client machine that is onto your system it means you are sitting on this computer and you are accessing this remote computer completely onto your machine so you can issue the commands basically this is a command line tools once you establish the connection it is a, a command line tool that's a tell telnet we call it as you can type the commands to run the programs on this server sitting on this particular computer so it is like this you are sitting in your home but you are trying to access a, another computer uh, which is present in your office and you are trying to issue the commands from your home so you can run the programs you can create folders you can delete files you can transfer files you can browse the directories available on the server you can start and stop services which are running on this which are related web services or database services or some other applications so you are sitting on this computer issuing the commands and those commands are getting executed on this particular remote computer remember this tele telnet is basically a, a unsecured data transmission happens if you are using this telnet so before the internet era when the people are connected with different networks they were trying to use this telnet protocol to transfer the data of course the security was not very much big concern before the internet so this telnet can be used even for managing and configuring the network routers or switches uh, of different organizations of different sizes of computer networks mm -hmm. and please do remember as i mentioned command this is basically a command line tool it means you can just issue the commands only there is no graphical user interface here so you have to remember the commands what commands to be executed on the remote server so this telnet is a very old protocol of course people in the old 
olden days used to connect to remote servers and do the work remotely so this is basically a not a secure data transmission happens between you and your remote server so when the internet has come then obviously telnet was not such uh, not much that useful so the drawbacks of telnet are all commands are in clear text when i say when they are in the clear text whenever you enter the commands here the commands along with the data that is been transferred sometimes like the usernames or the passwords which you enter from your uh, host computer and with those data which has been transmitted across this channel that is across this network either through cable or wireless definitely a third person can see what that particular transmission is if you are using a telnet protocol so whatever you enter your usernames passwords which you entered through this telnet are going to be seen to a third person means some anybody can who can uh, get into this network can see this data clearly what is being transmitted across this computers so there is no encryption that's why there is a clear text which the data can be clearly seen and this telnet is basically an outdated only used in land but not in the internet so in order to have a, a secure transmission of data from your host computer to your remote computer now nowadays we use another protocol called secure shell ssh ssh stands for secure shell so this is a protocol which uses encryption method to secure the connection between a client and a server so whenever you are going to transfer the data from one computer to the other computer that is from the client to the server or from the server to the client so there is going to be a, a secure communication is going to be established between this two ends so this ssh makes sure that uh, there is a, a data that is been transmitted uh, from one end to the other end is encrypted data so this is what the difference between the telnet and the secure shell but whatever the telnet the functionalities are there apart from the unsecured data transmissions this ssh takes care of the security features too so the connection the client initiates the connection by contacting the server so by entering the ip address or the domain name you try to connect from the client to the server then you the server uh, establish the connections with the whatever the cryptographic algorithm they are going to follow it so usually with the share the public key and establish the connection and they negotiate parameters and open a secure channel between the client and the server and the user logs into the system to transfer the commands I have to type the command sitting here so that the data is been transmitted securely to the remote server. So in order to uh, have a practice and understanding about how to use this SSH, you can use the tools like Putty. There is a Putty which is can be used uh, to have a secure connection between you and your remote server and to issue the commands and perform the data transfers across the computers. So in order to have some practice, there is a publicly available uh, website is also available for us which is uh, stf.org so you can open this ssh.sdf.org and coming to the next protocol is on the world wide web of course ssh this is not to be called as a protocol but this is a mechanism is a method to browse your hypertext documents which are stored on multiple servers so whenever you try to query or whenever you try to retrieve the information which is present on servers so usually we try to make use of this command or this particular statement with something else like something like www so you are sitting on a computer which we call it as a client or your host computer and you are using an application that is your client application usually our browser is being used here to issue the commands so on the browser you type some commands so you are giving some commands to retrieve the information present on different different servers so in this example uh, this is a, a server present in france there is a server present in belgium and there is a commercially available server so here so here we see that there are the three different servers you 
sit on a computer and try to retrieve the information present on three different servers by using the help of this World Wide Web. So, the key elements of this World Wide Web are basically you need to make sure that this www can be issued properly so you have seen in the uh, previous sessions too what is a url url stands for uniform resource locator so along with the url what is that you are trying to do with www so www will be the part of your url it means you are using a particular syntax to try to retrieve the information which is present on different servers that information is basically your documents or that other set of informations which are available on the servers. So whenever you try to issue this command www, you have to make sure that the documents which have been uh, giving us the information are in properly encoded form. So when I say when an encoded form means that the information which comes in a particular format, the information comes in a particular way. So that is the way where the information is made available to access. So we use a language called hypertext language. So that hypertext markup language will allow us to retrieve the data through the web pages that is present across this servers. So in HTML is a hypertext markup language and that is used to easily write the document with hypertext links. That is a, a special language which makes our ordinary text to make it as a hypertext so that that pages containing those hypertext links can be easily accessible from different servers and to access these documents which are been present in different servers we need to have a protocol a set of rules so that that particular hypertext documents can be accessed properly that protocol which we are using is basically an hypertext transfer protocol which is a lightweight application layer protocol to exchange the documents between the client and the servers or between the computers across this internet so this www consists of basically uh, a, a particular web page containing the hypertext documents and the protocol which is trying to retrieve or exchange the data across this computers so you also need some servers to send some data which is having with them and you need some clients which you can query those data which is available here so basically these are all the components which you need to uh, understand that the world wide web is going to be used so something like the example scis learn one.uhod.ac.in slash module so this is one example where which we have already been familiar with to access this so the U url what we are using to access the data to access the documents which are available on the Moodle servers we give the syntax like this so the protocol what protocol you are using to retrieve the data and followed by colon followed by forward slashes then followed by the the path to the documents where you can retrieve the information protocol is basically used to retrieve the document from the server usually this protocol can be http or https so http is the most common one but others are also frequently used so like this if, if you use an ftp you are going to retrieve the data if you are going to use ssh you are going to connect to a secure shell to exchange your data if you're using http you are going to retrieve the hypertext documents so this document indicates the server and the location of the document um, document on the server where this particular path will tell us to retrieve which document you are looking for so this is the syntax which you try to understand and sometimes there is a possibility whenever you connect through ftps or through your ssh you need to give your usernames and the passwords and to that server along with the port number which you are going to access so this is the optional uh, information usually you uh, the web uh, browsers do not give such kind of information but the web designers and web developers do have to give this set of uh, information along with the url so whenever you try to retrieve the data from the uh, servers, that is from the data which you get it from your servers to onto your client, the data or the documents will be encoded in a particular form. That particular form is basically we call it as hypertext form. So we use an hyper language 
where our entire information or entire data can be encoded in a suitable form which can be traversed across this internet when i say traversed means which can be exchanged information between the computers which are connected on the internet so that language that we are using here which can make our documents to easily accessible and to easily retrieve and send the data is that language is the basically an hypertext markup language now this hypertext markup language has got set of keywords when i say keywords these have been reserved words and these reserved words you have to use it uh, depending on your context and depending on your web page contents you need to use appropriate keywords these keywords in other terms which you call it also as tags so the tag will be uh, something like this a tag which will be having a, a less than symbol followed by some characters some letters followed by a greater than symbol so whatever you there is an angular between the angular braces which indicates a keyword and that is basically uh, this keyword what you see it here when i am um, positioning here they are placing the my cursor pointer here html this is a, an indication to that particular document that this is a starting of an html page or html document so this is like an open tag and for this uh, open tag there will be a corresponding end tag so that is what you call it as a close tag so like whenever you start a block of statements that block is going to have a starting pointer and an ending pointer to designate it as a block similarly this there will be an open tag and there will be a an close tag or an end tag so the end tags or close tags will always have the same set of characters preceded with the uh, forward slash so the forward slash along with the set of the same characters that you see indicates that this is basically a keyword which indicates that to the systems that this is an end tag with respect to the uh, the tag there will be a corresponding open tag and whatever you write in between this open tag and the close tag is indicates the block of statements block of commands block of instructions which are obviously related to this set of commands so you can see there are uh, html commands something like this html any beginning of your web page always will be started with html followed by the head tag so which indicates the head section something like this which indicates the head section so the head section contains something like the title of your web page or your document and that head here in this case in this example we have simply a title tag and corresponding closing title tag which indicates whatever you write in between this open title tag and closing title tag indicates the title of your web page and this head tag is within this particular html tag please see at the bottom of your html tag there is a closing corresponding html tag so in between whatever you write between the open html and the closing html contains all set of commands which are all related to your web page document block of statements so normally along with the title in c you will see in the other uh, later parts of our discussion where you see Uh, there will be script tags and the libraries which can also be included onto your head section so there's another another block of statements which you see after the head section or uh, that is a header section is the body tag so there is a, a open body tag corresponding to the open body tag you have a corresponding closing body tag so whatever you write in between this open body tag and closing body tag you have a set of commands so these are the commands or these are the keywords or these are the reserved words which indicates certain functionality on your web page on your document so here in this case img stands for image and this uh, image source you are going to give what is the image that you are going to show it on to your web page and followed by after the image you have something called h1 which corresponds to the heading one so there will be different set of headings at h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 these are the six headings usually your web pages do supports different levels of headings so this here in this case is basically h1 is used followed by the horizontal line hr line uh, one line is going to be displayed on the web page followed by unordered list that is a tag which shows that uh, there is a list of items here so these are list of items one after the other will be displayed along with some uh, basically this list of items or contains uh, another uh, uh, low another level of tag that is your anchor tag which you call it as a tag so each uh, uh, anchor tag reflects or gives us the functionality to uh, explicitly link to an another web page or basically a linking to another web document so here in this case 
you are giving h reference hyper reference h stands for hyper reference referencing to an another web page located at so and so server so and these are all the set of commands which you will see so now along with the html you have another important uh, component of your wwe is your http so the actual information transfer the exchange of data between the client and the server happens to with a protocol that protocol is basically hypertext transfer protocol of course uh, there are uh, different versions of this hypertext transfer protocol so here uh, which we start, try to understand we start with uh, 1.0 version followed by 1.1 then 2 and 3 so the latest version is again on the 3 so now let us see what is http 1.0 protocol is trying to do so this protocol basically relies on the uh, transmission control protocol service which works on the default port with port number 80. So what happens uh, this HTTP is that whenever you uh, a data transfer is to take place between the client and the server. So at the client, there will be a connection request. A primitive has been issued from the client side and the connection request issue has been given to your server side. And once this connection request has been reached to the server side, the server tries to uh, get that information which is in the form of an indication and the server responds to that particular request through uh, giving the response in the form of connection confirmation so once the connection has been uh, uh, requested has been confirmed from the server then the actual data transfer takes place the data which has been coming from this client request comes to this uh, in uh, the server side, it in uh, the server gets an indication that the data request has come. Then the server responds to that. That is, the, I have received the data, and the server response gives the response back to the client. So once the actual data has come transfer has completed, then that particular connection disconnect request is being initiated from the client side. And the disconnect request, once the indication is seen from the server side, that indication is acknowledged by saying that the disconnect request has been made. So whenever you try to transfer data using HTTP, so a connection is established, the data transfer takes place and the data is, uh, once the data transfer is completed, it gets disconnected. This is what actually happens in the HTTP one. So in the later topic, we'll see what are, what is HTTP 1.1 and actually what are the methods which are used by the HTTP to transfer the data or to create the data or to post the data or to delete the data. So we'll see how the HTTP 1, 1 1.1 uh, functions uh, and what is the difference between HTTP 1, 1 1.1, 2 and 3 in the next topic of discussion. Uh, thank you. I stop at this particular point. Yeah, thank you.